Okay, here we're going to look at some more examples involving inverse trig functions. And in this video, I'm going to evaluate uh, parts E, F, and G. The first one won't be too bad. Uh, the other part F and part G will have to actually use right triangles to, to simplify those. And that'll be the same idea. We'll use right triangles as well when we simplify parts H and parts I. But I'll do those in a separate video. So, okay, so cosine cosine of the inverse sine of 1 half. Well, we can evaluate the inverse sine of 1 half. Again, that equals some number. Let's call it x. Well, again, we can apply uh, the sine function to each side. So I'm just taking the sine of both sides. And again, using our cancellation properties, the sine of inverse sine, that's just going to leave us with our 1 half. So again, equivalently, you know, to figure out inverse sine of 1 half, equivalently, we're thinking sine of what angle is 1 half. And again, let me stress that our angle x here has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Okay, so again, don't forget about that part. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Again, I always have to draw my little unit circle. Well, let's see. At the angle pi over 6, at the angle pi over 6 on the unit circle, the x-coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, but the y-coordinate is 1 half. So sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half. Okay, so again, uh, that's what we're... Uh, that's going to give us the value of inverse sine of 1 half. So now we know that evaluating cosine of inverse sine of 1 half, that's equivalent to evaluating, well, cosine of pi over 6. And again, cosine of pi over 6 is simply going to give us square root of 3 over 2. So that would be our answer for that portion. All right, let's uh, jump to the others where we have to do right triangles. So the problem with part F here, you know, I, I, I knew an angle off the top of my head, you know, inverse sine of 1 half, well, that's, that's pi over 6. And uh, the problem with part F, inverse sine of 2 thirds, I don't know uh, an angle that would give me uh, 2 thirds. So, you know, of course, if you had a calculator, you could do this, but Again, in a lot of classes where you would see these types of problems, you would be expected to do them without a calculator. So um, I'm going to relabel the stuff on the inside. I called it x a second ago. You can call it whatever variable you want. I'm going to call it theta this time. So theta is going to equal the inside stuff. Okay, so again, first off, our solution here, theta, would have to be between... Uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, just like we saw in the last example. But to get a positive value, it would actually have to be in the first quadrant. So we can actually even restrict ourselves to saying, well, actually our angle would have to be in the first quadrant between 0 and pi over 2 to get a positive value. Otherwise, if we were in the fourth quadrant, we would be getting negative values for sine. Okay, so I'm going to take the sine of both sides, just like we did a second ago. So on the left, well, we're just left with the sine of theta. On the right, we're left with 2 thirds. So now this is where we do the, the whole right triangle stuff. So I'm going to make a right triangle here. I'm going to label this as theta. And if you remember, you know, Sokotoa or all that stuff, it says sine of an angle is going to be the opposite, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side, if I label this angle theta, the opposite side, it says that's going to have a value of positive 2. And it says the hypotenuse is going to have a value of positive 3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, what eventually I would like to know, Okay, so we've got tangent of this, this value, but again, we're calling all of that stuff theta. So equivalently, I could say we're trying to evaluate tangent of theta. OK, 
Okay, so we want tangent of theta because we said theta was equal to the inverse sine of two thirds. And this is where the right triangle comes into it. So I can read off tangent of theta from my right triangle once I have it filled in a little bit better. So remember tangent of an angle, that's just the opposite over the adjacent. Well, I already know the opposite side. I know that that's equal to positive 2. The only value that I'm missing in this case is the adjacent, but we can get that using Pythagorean theorem. So the missing side squared plus 2 squared, that's going to equal 3 squared. Okay, well, 2 squared is 4. Um, on the right side, 3 squared is 9. So 9 minus 4, that'll say the missing side squared is uh, 5. And if we take the square root of both sides, well, we'll be left with simply the square root of 5. So now I know the adjacent side. That's going to be the square root of 5. And again, to me, you could leave the answer like this as 2 over root 5. Some people, you know, want to see the denominator ration, or, uh, rationalized. So to me, the answer, tangent theta equals 2 over root 5, that would be fine by me. Again, some people, though, want to see it rationalized. So we could multiply the numerator and denominator by square root of 5. And that would simply say that tangent of theta is 2 root 5 over 5. And that is going to be our solution. Okay, So tangent of theta is 2 root 5 over 5. And again, theta was just simply the inside expression. So set theta to the inside stuff. Um, use the, the, the corresponding trig function, uh, and once you have that, that's where you do your whole right triangle stuff. Alright, so one more using this idea, uh, part G. We've got sine of 2 times the inverse tangent of square root of 2. Okay, so do I know an angle right off the top of my head that's going to do that? Um, that's actually a good question. I'm so let's think about that real quick. Okay, so we've got. Um, I know it's not pi over four because uh, tangent of pi over four is just going to be one. So at pi over three, we've got one half comma root three over two, and then we've got root three over two comma one half. So I, I'm starting off by thinking, you know, inverse tangent of square root of 2. That equals something. Again, let's maybe call it theta. If we take tangent of both sides, and again, usually I skip this step, but just to, to emphasize what we're doing here. So we're left with square root of 2 on the left and tangent of theta on the right. So I'm thinking, do I know tangent of some angle that's square root of 2? And again, for tangent, the angle has to be between positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Well, let's see. Um, if we do the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate, I don't see um, you know, any of my common angles. Um, none of those common angles that I know of, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, none of those are going to give me the square root of 2 like I want. Okay, so I don't know an angle off the top of my head. Okay, so I don't know a solution. Well, when you don't know a solution, again, what you do for these is you use right triangles. Okay, so we can even restrict ourselves again like we did a second ago. So normally the angle is going to have to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 for tangent. But if our tangent of our angle, if it's going to be a positive number, that's going to restrict ourselves to the first quadrant. So we can really even say that in this case, theta is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. We can make that extra restriction because, again, tangent of an angle has to give us a positive value. And the only angles between 0 and pi, or excuse me, between, yeah, uh, uh, between uh, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 that do that are going to be in the first quadrant. Okay. So same thing, I'm going to set up a right triangle here. 
Now we've got to be a little careful uh, about this one, and the thing that's different here is we've got this two hanging out front, but we'll come back to that in, se in a second and talk about how to how to do this. Okay, so I'm just going to make my right triangle. There's my angle theta. So I've got tangent of theta. I'm going to write this as the square root of 2 over 1. And that way I've got an opposite side, which is going to be the square root of 2. And I've now got an adjacent side, which is going to be positive 1. And Pythagorean theorem, so the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared, that's going to be the hypotenuse squared. Well, the square root of 2 squared is going to be 2 plus 1. That'll give us 3 equals the hypotenuse squared. So if we take the square root of both sides, we'll have, well, the square root of 3. Okay, so now we've got our right triangle labeled. Again, the inverse tangent of square root of 2, that's what we're calling theta. So really what I'm trying to read off from the triangle is I would like to know sine of, well, 2 theta in this case. Well, I can't read off sine of 2 theta from this triangle because we only have a positive theta. So in this case, this is where you have to use a trig identity. So that's kind of the last uh, little, little thing on this one. And recall that sine of 2 theta, that's 2 sine theta times cosine theta. So a useful little trig identity. Some people will just say sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta, which is absolutely uh, a, a big no-no. Uh, that's, that's not the identity. You can't just pull the 2 out. But it is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. And again, I can now read off sine theta and cosine theta from my nice little triangle. So let's see. Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's see, the opposite from our angle would be the square root of 2. The hypotenuse is the square root of 3. Get all this in here. Okay, so the adjacent side from our angle is just going to be positive 1. And again, the hypotenuse in this case is going to be the square root of 3. So if we multiply, we're left with 2 times the square root of 2 in the numerator. And then we have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is just going to give us positive 3. So that's now going to be our solution for that last part. It says we get 2 root 2 over positive 3. So again, a few different examples there. Uh, part E, we could just evaluate directly as long as you know a few values on the unit circle. Uh, you could do this trick using right triangles just like we did as well in parts F and G. You could have certainly done that in part E, uh, part e but to me, you know, if you know a little bit of unit circle stuff, E is not too bad. F and G, though, this is where you have to use the right triangles. G it was even a little bit more complicated just because you have to also remember to use a trig identity.